Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you? Well, we got one, Todd, today that, sadly, this question has been asked a lot. Maybe one of the top five questions that we've gotten in, and the question deals with the topic of divorce. Okay. Is it ever okay, any under any situation, to get a divorce? All right. Well, let me start by saying a few things, and I really hope folks track with this because people aren't tuning in with this just out of morbid curiosity. There is an emotional, spiritual, personal, real reason that they want to ask this question a lot. So um, let me start by saying what we do know is absolutely clear in the Bible. God hates divorce, but God does not hate divorcees. The reason God hates divorce is because he loves people. And when God designed marriage, his intention was that it would be lifelong, that it would be covenantal, meaning it's not a contract that can be broken, but it's a covenant between two folks. It'd be monogamous, that it would be between a male and a female, and that specifically, if you're following God's admonition because he wants it to go well with you, that you would be joined together uh, in like-mindedness, that you'd be equally yoked, okay? So when what God has joined together, he doesn't want to see others brought apart. Divorce is not the unforgivable sin. But divorce is always a result of sin and hardness of heart. That's very clear from Scripture. Okay? So, the question, is it ever okay to get a divorce? Um, the, the, the way the question is phrased makes me uncomfortable. All right? Because what I want to say is that what we know God wants us to do is to always pursue uh, His will and way. Because His will and way will bring life to us. And so... If there ever is a time to get divorce, it would only be for the purpose of moving a person through the discipline that is the very severe consequence of, because of actions or choices that one spouse has made, bringing the full weight of that sin and error and hard-heartedness to a point where it demands some separation for the purpose of reconciliation and repentance. Everything we should do is for the purpose of restoring what God has intended as good and right and true. And so I want to make this very clear, all right? I can answer uh, this question. Well, first of all, I want to answer it the way Jesus did. And secondly, I want to answer it very simply in a word. The way that's worded, I can answer it in, in a very simple word. But I will tell you this. The reason that you would is always to reconcile the relationship, if you ever would. Now, what did Jesus say? Because some people asked Jesus this question, and they asked him this, not because they were looking for a loophole, but because they wanted to set him up for a failure. It specifically says in Matthew 19, we're going to read from it here now, um, that they asked Jesus this testing him, because they knew whatever he said was going to offend two of one of the major rabbinical schools that were out there. One said that you couldn't divorce for any reason, the other one said you could if your wife burnt your toast, or you just woke up in a bad mood and wanted to move on. Okay? So let's read this. This is Matthew chapter 19. And so you just follow along with me. I'm going to ask you a question as I read this, okay? Some Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? We're saying, is it ever okay? All right, so is it against the law? Watch how Jesus answers this. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning, male and female, said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. So if you had to answer and summarize what Jesus said in verses 4, 5, and 6, when they said, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all, and Jesus says that, and you were going to reduce that to one word, what would you say? I'd say no. They're, they're say one no person. Too. Yeah, he said, what God's joined together, don't let man separate. And that really created an issue with them. Because they go, wait a minute, why then did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? And Jesus answered, I'm going to read you what his answer is, and I'm going to ask you to give me one word for his answer. He says in verse 8, because of your hardness of heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been that way. So in one word, what does he say is the reason that he had to permit divorce being a possibility? Sin. That would be the word I would use. Okay. Divorce is not the unforgivable sin, but make it clear. Every time divorce is involved, it's because of sin. Now, I'll ask you another question. What we need to do is expand this you know, um, to some other topics because one of the questions people have is if it's to, permissible to divorce, does that mean I'm free to remarry? And I'm going to tell you, we'll do a whole real truth real quick on that. But I will say this. If there is a biblical permission to divorce, it never assumes the biblical permission to remarry. So watch the real truth real quick on that, okay? 
So divorce is not the unforgivable sin. There are situations. Uh, we know the next verse I'm not going to read. He talks about what many people call the exception clause. And it's for what's called pornea or sexual immorality. We have a statement that's listed here in the show notes, Rick, that we've crafted over many months, many years, in fact, that we think is very well worded. It's outlining scripture. And what we say in there is that we know in cases of um, sexual immorality, there is a possibility that divorce may be a provision that would move us back to God's intention, which is reconciliation and restoration. We acknowledge um, abandonment is addressed in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 7. We'll maybe do a whole real truth real quick on that. And we also acknowledge abuse. We would never counsel somebody to stay in a situation where they are physically being threatened and their life is at risk. Proverbs 22 says the, the prudent see evil and hide themselves, but the naive proceed and inherit folly. Okay, And so we're not going to be people who sit there and, and say from the Bible, you got to stay there because God wants you to be married to that guy, so you must stay physically close. But I want to tell you something. Don't rush to divorce. Make sure you involve community and wise biblical counselors. God hates divorce because he loves you. And he doesn't want you and yours to experience the amazing pain. The other thing I want to say real quick on this as we shut this down is that sometimes people believe in what I would say is a false dichotomy that I've got only two options. One is stay married and be miserable, or two, divorce, get on with my life, and therefore be happy. And I'm going to tell you, those are not the only two options. God's intention is that you would begin to deal with things his way that would lead to reconciliation, restoration, and peace. I want to ask one follow-up question. We're, we're long on time, but I, but I want to ask this. You said this. You said that, that God, that divorce could be a way to reconcile the relationship. So yeah. somebody watching this could go, well, how in the world could divorce help me yeah. to get reconciled? Yeah, it's a severe mercy. It's, it's a, it's a uh, extreme act of consequence on somebody. So I'll tell you this. In Jeremiah 3, God divorces Israel. In other words, he lets Israel have the fruit of its ways. It wants nothing to do with God. So God grants them that divorce. God doesn't divorce them, actually. He grants them that divorce. And then they experience, hey, there is no other God out there that's a God. So they couldn't remarry to uh, any other God because there was no other God. They experienced the horror of going their own way. And then they long for that reconciliation. Sometimes uh, it is absolutely appropriate to say, okay, listen, if you're going to divorce me and you're going to go your own way, I'm going to let you experience the horror and the repercussions of that, and yet I'm going to continue to make myself um, such the uh, person that God wants me to be that everybody who meets you would know you to be a fool for not returning to this potential relationship. So what I would say is that divorce is a consequence that at times, in severe instances, can be permitted because of sin. All right, But we would never encourage the believing spouse to be the initiator of that, and we would always encourage the person who says they're a serious follower of Christ to be the one who initiates reconciliation and to be hopeful that God might restore what sin has destroyed. That's consistent with the nature of God. And so, hey, and if you're watching this and, and you're out there, we'll put an email address on the screen and we can help you. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have some programs. If you are having difficulties in your marriage, we really believe that you know, God is bigger than anything that you could be going through. And we've seen couples get healed and yeah. divorce papers. We'll have a link out. to re-engage, which is uh, available here and many spots around the country. But read the position paper that's there. I hope this is a helpful start for you. Read the position paper. Know we love you and we want God's best for you. We hate divorce because we love you. We'll see you next week on Real Truth Real Quick. 